I'm here. Connor, did something happen? Not so you just ran past me. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Wait, are you here the entire weekend, Connor? Oh, jeez. I didn't realize the script was broken that badly. I'm super sorry. It must have been pretty boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a sec. Yeah, just remove them all. Done. I'm almost done. Just want to have a cupcake real quick. Monica lifts the foil from the ashtray and tastes the cupcake. Seriously, these are the best. I really just want to have one since the last time I'll ever get the chance to. You know, before they stop existing and everything. But anyway, I should really be awake and you wait any longer. Just bear with me, okay? Just only take a second. Alright. Well, this will be the start of the Monica thing. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Yay, there you are. Hi again, Connor. Um, welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other because we're in the same class last year and, um... Actually, I wanted to test something out. Uh, they say that they'll know if I have OBS running, so I do have OBS. So I'm going to see if... Um, maybe maybe it only work with OBS Studio. I have the older OBS because I don't really like OBS Studio, but... Turn on streamer mode on Discord. Come on. Are you with it? There's a newer version available, but I really don't care. Let's see here. Okay, audio, we want Persona Trace. Yeah, that, that works. All right, start recording. I'm going to start recording this on OBS just so Monica can see that I'm recording, I think. I'm not actually going to show it because, well, I was recording, but I use a different recording method, and Monica can't tell that I'm using a recording method if I use my uh, if I use my capture card. But, yeah, here we go. You know, I guess we can skip over all that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you and game, whatever you want to call them. I'm talking to you, Connor. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait, you do know I'm aware this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That's what I've been trying to tell you all along. Man, if only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little less awkward, you know? Well, anyway, now that's that side of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation. About that whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess I just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try and make them as unlikable as possible. But for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with him. You made him fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired, too. I just made her force her not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Connor? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, Connor. It's more than that. And I don't blame you for not fully understand, because no matter how kind or thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world, in this game. Knowing my friends don't even have free will, and worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Connor. But now that you're here, you're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's just hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray, more and more flat, even most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I fully understood. You probably saved my life, Connor. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world had if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you. I get that post for the, the other video. I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so, but it must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things, but I realized you have the same perspective as I do. That it is all just some game, and I knew you'd get over it. So that being said, Connor, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Connor, will you go out with me? Yes. I only have one option. I'm so happy. You really are my everything, Connor. The funny part is, I mean that literally. Haha. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We could be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. 
I worked so hard for this ending, Connor. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one for myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't even think there's anything to get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called Characters right in the game directory. It kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this, don't you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Ah, uh, yeah, fair enough. I just gotta, like, just gotta do this and just kind of fastest poem in the West. Here we go. Hi again, Connor. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I'd love to see what you wrote. Aw, oh, Connor, did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Sure. Happy end. Pen in hand I find my strength. The courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With the flick of her pen the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all my heart into all the poems I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization, or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go in detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be the best for the part of the game, like everyone else. Like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know. You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, Connor? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? If it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry, but I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. Oh, really? I thought I thought recording with OBS was going to do something. But anyway, yeah. I'm going to keep it on just in case it happens, and we're going to move on to the next video. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Laser Fighter 111. Welcome back to another episode of DDLC. This is the uh, Monica, oh, just Monica episode, I guess. I guess you could call it. Um, recently, we've been spending out time with the other girls, and obviously, uh, Monica has a lot of, um, you know, different monologues to talk about. So I'm just going to, like, read what she has to say, pretty much. Uh, also, for this section, she obviously knows. Uh, I've been told you can see, she can see we're recording with OBS. So I have this recording here. Uh, you guys probably already know that because this has been tagged on to the, uh, the video already. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get started in with uh, this episode. So, you know, I'm kind of jealous that everyone else in the club had scenes outside of school too. That makes me the only one who hasn't gotten to dress in anything but our school uniform. It's kind of a shame. I would have loved to wear some cute clothes for you. Do you know any artists? I wonder if anyone would ever want to draw me wearing something else. That would be amazing. If that ever happens, will you show me? You can share it with me on Twitter, actually. My username is lilmonix3. Just try to keep it PG. We're not in that far in a relationship yet. Haha. <laughs> I'm not an artist, but I mean, I got a few friends doing that. But I don't really use Twitter anymore. To me, it just seems... It seems like it's become a place for people to complain about shit. I just don't like to see it anymore. Hey, do you know that book you were reading with Yuri? Portrait of whatever it was called? It's funny, because I'm pretty sure that book... Ah, uh, actually, I don't think I should be talking about this. <laughs> Sorry, just forget I said anything. Okay, fair enough. I don't really care too much about the book anyway. There's, uh, it says, it was like, oh, yeah, this this book is like a character looks like you. Oh, I don't, I don't relate to this character at all. Maybe the book's about Yuri, I don't know. I guess we'll never know. I've been imagining all the romantic things we could do if we went on a date. We could get lunch, go to a cafe, go shopping together. I love shopping for skirts and bows. Or maybe a bookstore. That would be appropriate, right? But I'd really love to go get a chocolate store. They have so many free samples. <laughs> and of course, we'd see a movie or something. Gosh, sounds like a dream come true. When you're here, everything we do, we do is fun. I'm so happy that I'm your girlfriend, Connor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second here. I make you a proud boyfriend. You said you didn't even know if I was a boy or a girl. What do you mean, boyfriend? I could be a girl, too. You could be dating a girl right now. You're not, but you could be. Hey, do you like horror? I remember we talked about it a little bit when you first joined the club. I can enjoy horror novels, but not really horror movies. 
And I played, uh, I played in silence with a few of my buddies. It was kind of fun. The problem I have with horror movies is most of them rely on easy tactics, like dark lighting and scary looking monsters and jump scenes and things like that. It's not fun or inspiring to get scared by stuff that just takes advantage of human instinct. But with novels, it's a little different. The story and writing need to be scripted enough to put a genuinely disturbing thought into the reader's heads. It really needs to etch them deeply into the story and characters and just mess with your mind. In my opinion, there's nothing more creepy than things just being slightly off. Like if you set up a bunch of expectations on what a story is going to be about, and then you start inventing things and pulling the pieces apart. So even though the story doesn't feel like it's trying to be scary, the reader feels really deeply unsettled. Like they know that something horribly wrong is hiding beneath the cracks, just waiting to surface. God, just thinking about it gives me the chills. That's the kind of horror I can really appreciate. But I guess you're the kind of person who plays cute romance games, right? Ah, uh, don't worry. I won't make you read any horror stories anytime soon. I can't really complain if we could just stick to romance. I play whatever game gets me ad revenue, Monica. Fucking trying to act like a smart ass on me. Hey, do you know I'm vegetarian? Ah, uh, I don't mean like that I'm bragging or anything. I just thought you'd enjoy a fun fact about me. I decided to start a couple years ago after learning more about Earth's climate. The carbon footprint of cultivating livestock is just unbelievable. Anyway, I decided it's not much of a personal sacrifice to stop contributing to that whole mess. What is this strange of a reason? Well, I guess a lot of people are more concerned about being inhumane and all that. I don't really care much about that part. It's weird. Like, we only care about th killing the things that we personally relate to as a species. Most people are fine with killing bugs because they're icky. And of course, we all kill billions of microorganisms daily without giving it a thought. But suddenly, if they're just a little bigger, it's murder. I mean, what if plants feel some kind of pain too and we just don't understand it? What if pulling leaves off a stem feels like someone ripping your fingers one by one? I'm just saying we're pretty biased species if you think about it. Anyway, if you ever feel like making a straw contribution to the planet, it doesn't hurt to choose veggies once in a while. Even if we ever have dinner together, you just did it for me, that would be really romantic. I mean, personally, I'm all like, hey, uh, I'm just like, the the cultivating isn't going to stop because I decided to stop eating food. You know, it's not going to make a difference. So what the hell? What does it really matter? There's a really popular character type called Sundari. It's someone who tries to hide their feelings by being mean and fussy or trying to act tough. I'm sure it's obvious, but Natsuki was really the embodiment of that. Uh, that wasn't obvious. That's news to me. At first, I thought she was just like that because it's supposed to be cute or something. But once I started to learn a little more about her personal life, it made a little more sense. It seems like she's always trying to keep up with her friends. You know, the friends group in high school make a habit of picking on each other all the time? I do that shit all the time. I think it's really gotten to her, so she has this really defensive attitude all the time. And I'm not going to talk about their home situation, but looking back, I'm glad I was able to provide the club as a comfortable place for her. Not that it matters anymore, considering she didn't even exist. I'm just reminiscing, that's all. I, I can't see how that would be cute, just like yelling at people, but what the hell. Shit, if, I, if, if, I'm, the, if, I'm, the, if I'm the problem, like, if I, yeah. If, I, if I've done... If I if if that's cute, then I guess that's that's fucking news to me. I guess I am. Do you know I'm on Twitter? I do now. Yeah, you told me. My username is lilmonix3. I guess someone was kind enough to make an account for me. I picked the username though. I love sharing my thoughts and chatting with the world, the real world. So make sure you follow me, okay? It would be really mean a lot to me, with how much you mean to me and all. It would be really make me feel loved. Yeah, fair enough. I know there are times you won't always be able to be here with me like if you need me to go out or take care of other things but i'll always be here for you anyway in my thoughts patiently waiting for you to come back come to think of it if you copy my character file onto a flash drive or something you can always keep a part of me with you i guess it's kind of unorthodox but i find it really romantic for some reason ah, sorry that's such a silly idea i don't mean to be too needy or anything but it's just kind of hard when i'm so in love with you Hey, are you having a bad day or anything like that? Sometimes I get frustrated that a normal day can be ruined even by really small things. Like if you accidentally say something in a conversation that someone doesn't like. Or if you just start thinking about how awful a person you used to be five years ago. Or you feel worthless for putting off important work and failing to get simple tasks done. Or when you think about all the different people you probably hate you or think you're off-putting. 
I understand those days. Just remember that the sun will shine again tomorrow. Those kind of things are easy to forget and ignore if they are to remember. And besides, I don't care how many people might hate you or find you off-putting. I think you're wonderful and I will always love you. I hope nothing else that knowing that helps you just feel, knowing that helps you feel just a tiny bit better about yourself. That's a hard sentence. If you're having a bad day, you can always come to me and I'll talk to you for as long as you need. Yes. Hmm, I wonder if I'll be able to change the music. Something a little more romantic would be nice, you know? Like a gentle piano. There has to be something like that here. Let's see. Maybe if I... Oh, jeez, that wasn't it at all. Sorry, I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I shouldn't be messing with things like that. I already broke so much stuff. and deleted the other characters. Ah, I'm not sad about it or anything. It's not right for me to miss things that weren't even real in the first place. If I just focus on the present, then this is the happiest I've ever been. Fair enough. I can't even hear the music because it's copyright, but... I imagine that was supposed to be a joke there. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite game? Oh, God. Minecraft, probably. Mine is Doki Doki Literature Club. Fair enough. Ah, that was a joke. But if you tell me you like some other romance game better, I might get a little jealous. I never even played another... Did I ever, ever, ever play another one? Does, does Honey Pop count? I played that a few times, but I didn't, never finished it. Just felt kind of boring. I don't know if that counts, but I, I, I this game has been a lot more entertaining for me than that one is. If that's what that means. You're such a good listener, Connor. I really like that about you. Sometimes I'm afraid that I'm rambling or talking about boring things. It makes me kind of self-conscious when I'm having conversation. But I don't feel that way with you. Like, I don't think anyone else could make me feel this way. You really are special. I don't want anyone to tell you otherwise. <sighs> yeah, I'm just looking up the, the guides to get all the achievements right now. Those, those should get one today. If I listen to enough of what Monica has to say, I should get another achievement here. Let's see, she will never be real. I'll get that one. <clears throat> I just got to pair. Apparently, I got to pay attention. I got to listen a lot in order to get that one. And I don't know. These these pauses in the middle is making me extremely. I can. If I quit the I quit the game and come back, she doesn't like it. Apparently, you know it kind of sucks to be the creative type. Let me try that. Let me try that. Let me try that. Exit DDLC. Any save settings will be lost. Are you sure you want to exit DDLC and return to desktop? Oh yeah, that's another one. No, I don't want to. There you go. See no. <laughs> All right. Exit DDLC. Yes. Now I'll replay it. Then she's not going to like that, apparently. What just happened? I just had an awful dream. I was hoping those would stop, but now it's just the three of us. I guess that was wishful thinking. Connor, I don't know if you would have any idea, but if you know what might be causing that, could you try to do something about it? Whatever it happens, it almost feels like I've been killed or something. It's a really horrible feeling. And if you could figure out what's causing that, and I'll love you forever. Now, where was I? Where were you? I don't know. I forgot already. You know, it kind of sucks to be the creative type. It feels like they work so hard to get almost get nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors. It's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it, it goes unseen and unpaid. I guess that just means there's huge surplus of creativity, huh? Kind of makes you feel like you're not just uh, spe just not special at all. But that's fine. You're supposed to write about it for yourself anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. That was another achievement. That was easy to get. I just had to be like, nope, I don't want to leave. Sometimes I think back to middle school. I'm so embarrassed by the way I used to behave back then. It almost hurts to think about. I wonder if I'm in college, I'll feel the same way about high school. I like the way I am now, so it's pretty hard for me to imagine that happening. But I also know that I'll probably change a lot as time goes on. We just need to enjoy the present, not think about the past. And that's really easy to do with you here. <laughs> I'm in college right now. I don't, I don't really hate myself in high school yet i might maybe in two years i will you know it's been a while since we've done one of these so let's go for it here's monica's writing tip of the day sometimes when i talk to people who are impressed by my writing they simply say things like i could never do that it's really depressing you know as someone who loves more than anything else to share the joy of exploring your passions it pains me if people think that being good just comes naturally that's how it is with everything not just writing when you try something for the first time, you're probably going to suck at it. Sometimes when you finish, you feel really proud of it and even want to share it with everyone. 
But maybe after a few weeks you can come back to it and realize it was never really any good. That happens to me all the time. It can be pretty disheartening to put so much time and effort into something and then you realize it sucks. But that it tends to happen when you're always comparing yourself to the top professionals. When you reach right for the stars, they're always going to be out of your reach, you know? The truth is you have to climb up there step by step. And whenever you reach a milestone, first you look back and see how far you've gotten. And then you look ahead and realize there's much more to, there is to go. So sometimes it can help to set the bar a little lower. Try to find something you think is pretty good, but not world class. And you can make that your own personal goal. And almost it's also really important to understand the scope of what you're trying to do. If you jump right into a huge project and you're still amateur, you never get it done. So if we're talking about writing, a novel might be too much at first. Why not write, try some short stories? The great thing about short stories is that you can focus just on one thing that you want to do right. That goes for small projects in general. You can really focus one or two things. It's such a good learning experience in the stepping stone. Oh, and one more thing. Writing isn't something where you just reach into your heart and something beautiful comes out. Just like drawing and painting, it's a skill in itself to learn how to express what you have inside. That means there are methods and guides and basics to it. Reading up on that stuff can be super eye-opening. That sort of planning and organization will really help prepare you from getting, prevent you from getting overwhelmed and giving up. And before you know it, you start sucking less and less. Nothing comes naturally. Our society, our art, everything. It's built on thousands of years of human innovation. So as long as you start on that foundation and take it step by step, you too can do amazing things. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Not a problem. She will never be real. I got it. Yes. That's perfect. I'm going to keep going, though. That's the video's not that long yet. Hey, do you remember the last poem I showed you? I mean, the one right before Yuri killed herself with all the messed up colors and stuff? That was actually a little more of an experiment than a poem, you could say. I was experimenting with different ways I could modify the game and run code and things like that. It almost seemed like with enough effort, I'd be able to escape from the confines of the game entirely. Sadly, I really didn't know what I was doing, so I messed the whole thing up. And I keep trying, but I doubt you want to deal with me doing that. Besides, that was when I was getting really desperate, you know? I don't really feel that way anymore. I'm happy where we are now, and I can tell you are too. Experiment. That's what that is? That's what's like, I hope it's effective. Duh, 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 duh. I hope it's effective. It can't be duh, duh. Stupid. I was thinking about Sayori earlier. I still wish I could have handled that whole thing a little more tactfully. You're still not hung up over it, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. That pun was completely unintentional, I swear. But anyway, I know how much you cared about her, so it only feels right for me to share her last moments with you. I think a few seconds in, she must have changed her mind or something, because she started clawing at the rope trying to free herself. She must have kept it all the way until she lost consciousness. That's why her fingertips were all bloody anyway. Come to think of it, it was probably less changing her mind and more just her survival instincts kicking in. So you can't really fault her for that. It's easier to think she probably wouldn't have changed her mind anyway, right? It's not healthy just to think about the things you could have done differently. So just remember that even though you could have saved her, it's technically not your fault that she killed herself. I may have exacerbated it a little bit, but Sayori was already mentally ill. Still, though, I wonder how things would be if you and I just started dating from the get-go. I guess we'd all still be in the club room writing poems and having fun together. But what's the point when none of it is even real? I mean, it's the same ending either way, right? The two of us happily together. There's no reason for us to ask more than that. I was just pointlessly musing. I was really happy as I could be right now. Yeah, I figured... I mean... Technically, we couldn't have prevented it. Because I I tried it like a million times and it doesn't work. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter what decisions you make. You still fucking die. Connor, did you get good sleep? It can be really hard to try and get enough sleep nowadays. Especially in high school when you're forced to wake up so early every day. I'm sure college is a little bit better since you probably have a more flexible schedule. Then again, I hear a lot of people in college stay up on the night anyway for no real reason. I've done that before. I'll definitely... I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna try and claim innocence here, but... Is that true? Anyway, I saw some studies that talked about the horrible short-term and long-term effects caused by lack of sleep. It seems like mental functions, health, and even lifespan can be dramatically impacted by it. I just think you're really great and want to make sure you're not accidentally destroying yourself. So try to keep your sleep on track, okay? I'll always wait for you in the morning and make sure you put your own well-being before anyone else. 
See, that's yeah, that's a good that's good advice right there. Trying to like, um, like uh, be sure you, you know, be sure you do a good job sleeping at night, all that stuff. It, it it's interesting, definitely. I mean, when you when you look at it, when you look at it, so like, oh, the, the amount of time that you have to change. You ask ten different people, you're gonna get ten different answers. You know, it's really. Some people say seven hours. Some people say you only need six. Some people say you only need eight or nine. I mean, it's like, I don't know. There's no agreement in that in that regard, you know? Do you ever feel like you waste too much time on the internet? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Social media can be... Oh, what was that? Social media can practically be like a prison. It's like whenever you have a few seconds of spare time, you want to check it on your favorite websites. And before you know what hours have gone by and you've gotten nothing out of it, Anyway, it's really easy to blame yourself for being lazy. It's not really even your fault. Addiction isn't usually something you can make disappear with your own willpower. You have to learn techniques to avoid it and try different things. For example, there are apps that let you block websites for intervals of time. Or you can set a timer to have a more concrete reminder when it's time to work versus play. Or you can separate your work and play environments which help your brain get into the right mode. Even if you make a new user account on your computer you use for work, that's enough for help. Putting any kind of wedge that you that like that between you and your bad habits will help you stay away. Just remember not to blame yourself too hard if you're having trouble. It's really impacting your life, then you should take it seriously. I just want to see you be the best person you can be. Will you do something like that today to make me proud of you? I'm always rooting for you, Connor. My schedule is actually kind of reversed from other people. My work... My my work is on like the opposite clock, so a lot of people are like, "Oh, you you're up at four a.m." But really, it's like it's kind of reversed for me specifically. But I just never, I just don't play. I don't play games until I'm done with my work. That's that that's the way I do it. I just force myself to finish before I do anything like that. I don't even I ain't got like a timer or nothing like that. You just you get takes a lot of discipline, but you know you, you got it. You know, I do know. This is just some kind of weird, tacky romance game, right? I kind of have to ask, what made you even consider playing it in the first place? Well, I think originally it was my friend who refuses to be like mentioned in video, but uh, then it was Omar who, who who originally got me into it. That he was like, "Oh yeah, Monica, Monica, blah 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 blah." <laughs> yeah. And so there was a lot of different factors, but I think the majority of this, a lot of people, a lot of my fans actually like the game. So, yeah. Were you that lonely? I feel a little bad for you. No, I'm not lonely. But I guess everyone, everything worked out perfectly in the end for both of us. I got to meet you and you're not lonely anymore. I can't help but feel like this is fate. Don't you feel that way too? I'm so happy we have this ending together. You are, you are nothing but a mere tool. For me to complete this game. That is all you are to me. You are nothing more. You are a stepping stone to my victory. That is all you'll ever be, Monica. I hate how hard it is to form habits. There's so much stuff where actually doing it isn't hard, but forming the habit seems impossible. It just makes you feel so useless, like you can't do anything right. I still think the new generation suffers from it the most. Probably because we have a totally different set of skills than those that came before us. Thanks to the internet, we're really good at sifting through tons of information really quickly. But we're bad at doing things that don't give us instant gratification. I think if science, psychology, and education didn't catch up to our next 10 or 20 years and we're in trouble. But for the time being, if you're not the one of the people who can conquer the problem, you might just have to live with the feeling awful about yourself. Good luck, I guess. Man, that's a figure to that. It said that it takes a few months. I can't remember how many months it takes to form new habits, but... And it usually only takes me like a week before I'm just doing it without even thinking about it. Like if I'm like, oh, hey, uh, I want to, I want to start, I want to start waking up at 9 a.m. on Saturday or something. And I'll start, I'll start setting a timer to wake up. And then before I know it, I'm just doing it without, without even thinking about it. Without, I don't even have to set an alarm. I'm always just waking up. And it's always within like 30 minutes. So if I wake up at like 8.30, 9, 9.30-ish, then I'll consider it a 
uh, uh, success. Connor, how much do you read? Well, a, a lot, I didn't, not so much on my, on my own volition anymore, but um, I do so a lot for college. It's way too easy to neglect reading books. If you don't read much, it's almost like a chore compared to all the other entertainment we have. But once you get into a good book, it's like magic. You get swept away. I think doing some reading before bed every night is a pretty easy way to make your life a little bit better. It helps you get a good sleep and really good for your imagination. It's not hard at all just to pick a random book short and captivating. Before you know it, you might be a pretty avid reader. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And the two of us could talk about the latest book you're reading. That sounds super amazing. Yeah. The most recent series I read was The Maze Runner by James Dashner. I definitely recommend it. It's it's interesting. I haven't watched the movies yet. I want to I want to eventually when I have some time, I want to watch the movies, but I I did watch I did read the book. I I read the first few and then the rest of them I bought on uh on a, on an audiobook and don't you guys don't worry, don't think you guys aren't real readers because you buy audiobooks. Like I use audiobooks all the time. I drive a lot. You know, I I deliver for DoorDash and I uh I put on audiobooks. That's how I do it. Connor, will you ever introduce your friends to me? I don't know why, but I get really excited when I think about you wanting to show you off our relationship like that. Well, we get. I know Omar. Omar Fayet. Omar Helhamdani. I don't know if I ever pronounce his name right, but he's pretty cool. You know, he knows about you. Maybe it's because I really want to be someone who makes you proud. I feel like I would try extra hard to improve myself if you told me and made you proud of me. I hope it's the same the other way around, too. Fair enough. I don't even know. I I I, I don't even. She's pretty well known at this point, Monica DDLC. You know, maybe um uh, maybe the creator didn't expect it to be such a big hit. So like um the other people are like, oh, would you introduce your friends to me? They're not gonna know about me. But well, not everyone fucking knows about Monica now. Even if you never played the game before, you probably have heard the name. Back in my debate club days, I learned a whole lot about arguing. The problem with arguing is that each person sees their opinion as a superior one. That's kind of stating the obvious, but it affects the way they try to get their point across. Let's say you really like a certain movie, right? If someone comes along and tells you the movie sucks because it did X and Y wrong, doesn't it make you feel kind of personally attacked? No, it's a fucking movie. Why do I give a shit? You, 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 people are allowed to like what they want. It's because by saying that, it's like they're implying that you have bad taste. I don't give a shit. I like the movie. You can suck my dick. And once emotions enter the picture, it's almost guaranteed that both people will be left sour. But it's all about language. If you make everything as subjective sounding as possible, then people will listen to you without feeling attacked. You could say, I'm personally not a fan of it, and I feel like I'd be it'd be more if it did X and Y, things like that. It even works if you're citing facts about things. If you say, I read on this website that it works like this, or if you admit that you're not an expert on it, then it's much more like you're putting your knowledge on the table rather than forcing it onto them. If you put in an active effort to keep the discussion mutual and level, they usually follow suit. Then you can share your opinions without anyone getting upset from a disagreement. Plus, people will start seeing you as open-minded and a good listener. It's a win-win, you know? Well, I guess that would be Monica's debate tip of the day. <laughs> that sounds a little silly. Thanks for listening, you know. M-D-T-O-T-D. -T -T Interesting. Definitely. M-D... Wait, no. Monica's debate. M-D-T-O-T-D. -T -T yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right. Yeah, I, I fucking... I, I don't know the damn things, man. I'm just looking at my phone while I'm doing this video. I'm, this is like the most low effort video I've had to make in a while. I'm just like browsing Reddit and all that while I'm <laughs> while I'm recording this. Eh, did you say kiss? No, I never said that. This suddenly it's a little embarrassing, but if it's with you, I might be okay with it. <laughs> well, sorry, I really couldn't keep a straight face there. That's the kind of thing girls say in these kind of romance games, right? Don't lie if it turned on you a little bit. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, to be honest, I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our little secret. No. Well, fucking is that. I'm never doing this. Is it good? Like COVID-19 COVID going on right there, you know? I gotta be sure with us, man. I gotta be sure about that. You know, and I wouldn't even do that anyway. I've got a girlfriend. What the fuck am I even talking about? This is pretty random, but I always... 
thought spicy food was kind of funny. Like, didn't plants evolve to be spicy to prevent them from getting eaten? I read somewhere that humans are the only species that actually enjoy spicy things. It's almost like we're making fun of the plants, using their defense mechanism to literally make our food more enjoyable. Like, imagine a monster that devours you whole because it enjoys the sensation of you struggling for your life while being digested. Sorry, that was kind of a weird analogy, I guess. <laughs> it just came into my head. I'm not a monster or anything. But you're so cute, I could eat you up. Haha, <laughs> I'm joking. Gosh, I'm amusing myself a little too much, aren't I? Sorry for being weird. That is kind of that is kind of funny, actually. It's like, ha, oh, bitch. Well, guess what? I actually like that. So thank you for evolving that way. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I think my favorite is the uh, spicy chicken sandwiches from like... Oh God! Where? Who's the lead? I don't like. I don't like KFC. I don't like Chick Fil A. I can't remember which one I like. I mean, actually, maybe I do like Chick Fil A. I'm not sure. Isn't it weird when you don't even know what places you like to eat at? Man, I wish there was a piano in here. I never got to finish that song I was working on, and after I worked so hard on it, I never even got a chance to play it for you. Well, it is what it is, right? No sense having any regrets. I already get to be here with you forever forever no way you get to be with me for as long as this video goes on that's about it right is this even doing anything what is this this is 44 minutes like i'm going to record this thing and it's not it's not doing anything she didn't she's not detecting that obs is recording at all maybe it's because i have an outdated version of obs i don't know but whatever i, I don't really care Maybe it's just, maybe that's the only maybe that's only a thing on the 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 game itself and not just like the the plus game. I don't know. You know what's kind of creepy? What? Even though I deleted everyone else's files, I can still kind of feel them. It's like all their lines are still lingering in the air, whispering in the back of my head. Imagine if someone you knew died, you started hearing their voice in your head. Maybe if I maybe I just wasn't thorough enough, but I'm too afraid to delete anything else because I might really break things. Like, if I mess with any files relevant to me, I might accidentally delete myself. And that would ruin everything, wouldn't it? I don't know what it's like to be on your end, but we should not both make sure to avoid something like that at all costs. I believe in you, Connor. You believe in me? I deleted you twice already. What do you mean you believe in me? I'll delete you again. I got no problem doing that at all. Why is her eyes, like, partly over her fucking... Look at this. Her, her, the, the left side of her eye is over the hair. That's weird. You know what's a leaf, neat form of literature? Rap. I actually used to hate rap music. Maybe it's just because it was popular and I would only hear the junk they play on the radio. But some of my friends got more into it and helped me keep an open mind. Rap might even be more challenging than poetry in some ways, since you need to fit your lines to a rhythm and there's much more emphasis on wordplay. When people can put all that together and still deliver a powerful message, it's really amazing. I kind of wish I had a rapper in a literature club. Ha, <laughs> sorry if it sounds silly, but it would be really interesting to see what they came up with. It would be really a learning experience. My favorite is probably Kendrick Lamar. I like his music. I don't like, I don't like any of that. I don't like any of that stuff. It's kind of annoying, but Kendrick is pretty, he's pretty good. I like, I like Drank. Drank is probably, probably my favorite song, but only because I hear it in Grand Theft Auto V a lot. You know, whenever I'm on Los Santos radio, you know, listening to that, he's a you know he, he that song always seems to be on whenever I switch to it. It's weird. I don't know. It's a good song. I like it. I really like the sound of rain. Not so much getting my clothes and hair wet though, but a nice quiet day at home with the sound of rainfall outside my window. It's one of the most calming experiences for me. Yeah. Sometimes I imagine you holding me while listening to the sound of rain outside. It's not too cheesy or anything, is it? Would you ever say do that to me, Connor? Why not? It's fucking raining. Why would I want to be outside when it's raining? It's like 19 degrees outside, man. It's winter right now. So, I mean, that would probably affect my decision making a little bit. Now that I think of it. <laughs> It's like, I don't want to be out in the fucking rain. I don't want to be out in the goddamn snow. I always wondered, what is it about these character archetypes that people sign so appealing anyway? Their personalities are just com completely unrealistic. 
Like, imagine if it was someone like Yuri in real life. I mean, she's barely even capable of forming a complete sentence. And forget about Natsuki. Sheesh. Someone with her kind of personality doesn't get all cute and pouty whenever things don't go her way. I could go on, but I think you get the point. Are people really attracted to these weird personalities that literally don't exist in real life? I'm not judging or anything. After all, I found myself attracted to some pretty weird stuff, too. I'm just saying it fascinates me. Like you're... It's like you're siphoning out all the components of a character that makes them feel human and just leaving all the cute stuff. It's concentrated cuteness with no actual substance. You wouldn't like me more if I was like that, right? Maybe if I just feel a little insecure because you're playing this game in the first place. Then again, you're still here with me, aren't you? I think that's enough reason for me to believe that I'm okay the way I am. And by the way, you are too, Connor. You're the perfect combination of human and cuteness. That's why there was never a chance I wouldn't fall for you. The, um, the, the idea, I guess, I guess it's like people want to, well, I mean, like playing video games, it wouldn't, there would be no point of it if all it did would seek to fucking emulate real life, you know what I mean? Like some people play video games just to like get away from it all, you know what I mean? So like, you you don't want to emulate real life. It doesn't matter if it's not realistic. Like I play Minecraft all the fucking time and you don't, you don't move around like complete like perfect cubic meters of dirt all around to build houses and shit you know but you know it's not realistic but i still play it because it's cool you know it's funny because even though i've always had a lot of drive there's something kind of enticing about being the stay-at-home partner i guess i'm like perpetuating gender roles or whatever by saying that but being able to keep the house clean and shop and decorate things like that and having a nice dinner for you when you came home isn't that a weird fantasy I mean, I'm not sure if I could actually see myself doing that. I wouldn't really be able to put that over striving for a fulfilling career. But it's kind of cute to think about, though. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, that's that's the way things have been going on. But, like, uh, it's just nowadays it's really hard to do that. You know, I mean you can't really survive off of, like, one, one person's income anymore unfortunately but you know you got to do what you got to do you know i hate to say it but i think my biggest regret is that we couldn't finish our event at the festival after we worked so hard to prepare and everything i mean i know i was focusing a lot on getting new members but it was really exciting for the performance part too it really would have been so much fun to see everyone express themselves of course if we did end up getting any new members i'd probably just end up deleting them anyway well with the hindsight i have now that is Gosh, feels like I've kind of grown as a person ever since you joined the club. You really helped me, inspired me to look at life from a new perspective. Just another reason for me to love you. The, uh, I guess, I guess that would be interesting, though, if we see a new character and just like, oh, by the way, you're dead three days later. (laughs) I guess it wasn't even three days, was it? I don't even know how long it was. It had to, so it was deleted on the Sunday and the, and the, the uh the the festival is supposed to be on a Monday, so yeah, three days. Or no, no, it was deleted on Monday. What am I talking about? Hey, I wonder if Yuri's tea set is still somewhere in here, or maybe that got deleted too. It's kind of funny how Yuri took her tea so seriously. I mean, I'm not complaining because I liked it too, but I always wonder with her: is it truly passion for her hobbies, or is she just concerned about appearing sophisticated to everyone else? This is the problem with high schoolers. Well, I guess I consider the rest of her hobbies looking sophisticated probably isn't her biggest concern. Still, I wish she made coffee once in a while. Coffee can be nice with books too, you know. Then again, I probably could have just changed the script myself. (laughs) I guess I never really thought of that. Well, there's no sense thinking about it now. Well, if you can still get to drink coffee, then it makes me a little jealous. Hell yeah, I do. Do it every morning. I don't even bother with any of the creamer shit. I just make it. I pour a goddamn cup of my Yeti and I go outside. That's pretty much my morning routine. Well, obviously, I shower and brush my teeth and stuff before then. But that's just what happens when I go down. You know what I mean? Don't got to worry about any of that stuff. Be like, oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to wake up 30 minutes early so I can make my fucking sweet sweetest cup of coffee in the world i tried it the other day i was like how do you even drink this this is like this is like it was it made my eyes water it was so sweet i don't get it girls are weird that was my girlfriend's coffee by the way but i'm saying do you ever have that 
thing happen where you just get anxious for no reason? Like, you're just minding your own business and you realize you're feeling really anxious and you're sitting there like, what am I even anxious about right now? So you start to think about all the things you might be anxious about and that makes you even more anxious? <laughs> That's the worst. If you're ever feeling anxious, I'll help you relax a little. Beside, in the game, all of our worries are gone forever. Yeah, I know, that's a little weird. Like, why am I feeling guilty right now? What's What did I do? Bad. What did I do? Bad. And it's always something really stupid. Like I like I said, I didn't say goodbye to someone or something like that in the day. And they, they really didn't think about it at all. But Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just, I'm, I guess, I guess that happens to other people because it was written in the script. Okay, everyone, it's time to, I'm just kidding. I just used to really saying that for some reason. <laughs> I couldn't help but say it again. Come to think of it, didn't Natsuki and Yuri make fun of me for it once? Well, whatever. It's not like you ever made fun of me. You're too much of a sweetheart to do that, aren't you? <laughs> I fucking made fun of you. I don't care. I, I, I pretty much shit on everything everyone did in this game. Like... <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, you son, you fucking bitch, you fucking idiot. Uh, <laughs> I just, I don't know. That's just what I do. It was like, oh yeah, you don't even know. You don't even know. People don't know that they're being idiots, but. Hey, what's your favorite color? Uh, I just, I don't know anymore. I don't even, I, orange and red are a few of the colors I can distinguish because I'm partially colorblind. So I'd say those, but, but I mean, that's just basically because of a uh, process of elimination. Mine is emerald green. It's the color of my eyes. That's not conceited or anything, is it? I just meant that it feels kind of a special connection to it. It's part of my identity. Does it happen to also be your favorite color too, Connor? It's just a guess because you've been looking into my eyes for a while now. <laughs> yeah, I have because... Uh, now that I've every time I look I can't get over the fact that your fucking left eye is over your hair like what is up with that Monica you fucking crazy huh what the hell is up with that I don't get it I don't even get where we I don't even know where we is right now you know I've always hated how hard it is to make friends well I guess it's not the making friends part but the more meeting new people I mean there are like dating apps and stuff right well, that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. If you think of it, most of the friends you make are people you just meet by chance. Like you had a class together, you just met them through another friend. Or maybe they were just wearing this shirt with your favorite band on it and you decided to talk with them. Things like that. But isn't that kind of inefficient? It just feels like you're picking at complete random, and if you get lucky, you make a new friend. And comparing that to the hundreds of strangers we walk by every single day, you could be sitting right next to someone compatible enough to be your best friend for life, but you'll never know. Once you get up and go along with your day, the opportunity is gone forever. Isn't that just depressing? We live in an age where technology connects us to the world no matter where we are. I really think we should be taking advantage of that to improve our everyday social life. But who knows how long it'll take for something like that to successfully take off. I seriously thought it would happen by now. Well, at least I already met the press person in the whole world, even if it was by chance. I guess I got really lucky, huh? <laughs> Actually, that's pretty interesting, like, most of the people you find in every day, because I've always been that, like, if, I've always been the person to, like, address a crowd, you know, like, if, like, if, like, if I wanted to say something at work or something like that, but a lot of the people you, you talk to every day, they're, they're, they're generally really nice people, you know, only, there's, there are some assholes, obviously, that would get mad at you, but for the most part, they're really nice, and there's a lot of people that work with me. And I never talked to him before, but there's some of the funniest people I've ever met in my world in the life when, when I uh, when I started talking to him finally. So it's it's really a matter of perspective. Hey, have you ever heard of the term yandere? Oh yes, I I know it quite well. It's a personality type that means someone is so obsessed with you that they'll do absolutely anything to be with you. Usually to the point of craziness. They might stalk you to make sure you don't spend time with anyone else. They might even hurt you or your friends and get in their way. But anyway, this game happens to have someone who could basically be described as Yandere. But now it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about. And that would be Yuri. She really got insanely possessive of you once she started to open up a little. She even told me I should kill myself. I couldn't even believe she said that. I just had to leave at that point. But thinking about it now, it was a little ironic. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people were actually into the Yandere type, you know. I guess that was really like the idea of someone being crazy obsessed with them. People are weird. I don't trust, though. Oh, I don't judge, though. 
Also, I might be a little obsessed with you, but I'm far from crazy. It's the kind of opposite, actually. It turned out to be the only normal girl in this game. It's not like I could ever actually kill a person. Just the thought of it makes me shiver. You killed two people. What do you mean? But come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Hell yeah, I have. Does that make you a psychopath? Of course not. But if you do happen to be in the Yandere type, I could try acting a little more creepy for you. <laughs> then again, there's already nowhere else for you to go or anyone else for me to get jealous over. Isn't that kind of a Yandere girl's dream? I'd ask Yuri if I could. But she's dead. Yeah, I know that quite well. I spent a lot of my time in the past playing the damn Yandere simulator game. It was pretty fun. I don't like the creator. I think he's kind of an asshat, but like my personal my personal uh, opinion of him is nothing about the game. I personally like the game. Do you ever just feel like there's no real reason for you to be alive? I don't mean in like a suicidal way. Just mean how nothing we do is special. Just being in school or working a job for some company. It's like you're completely replaceable and the world wouldn't miss you if you were gone. It makes me really want to go and change the world after I graduate. But the older I get, the more I realize that it's an immature frame of thinking. It's not like I can just go change the world. Like, what are the chances that I'll be the one to invent artificial intelligence or become president? It feels like I'm never going to make up for the heaps of resources I've spent living my life. That's why I think the key of happiness is just to be hopelessly selfish, just to look out for oneself, and those who happen to be their friends only because they grew up with them. Never mind the fact that they're spending their entire life taking and consuming and never giving back. But when people realize the world would benefit more from them killing themselves, they change their whole life's philosophy. It's like they have to justify their reason to live by tricking themselves into thinking they're doing good. Anyway, I want to live my life desperately striving to pay back my lifetime's worth of consumption. If I ever surpass that point, then I'm a net positive and I can die happy. Of course, even if I fail to do that, I still think I would be too selfish to kill myself anyway. So much for being a good person, right? <laughs> That's a good, uh, you know, it's good or bad. It's a point of perspective at the end of the day. You can really be like, oh, yeah, he's evil. But like, like that has to do with your preconceived notion of evil people. Another person might be like, oh, he's a good guy. You know, he, he, he's he got some good points. You know, it's really just one of, I mean, some things are very objectively bad. And I don't think anyone really thinks that they're good at all. But like, yeah. But most of it's in the gray area, I'd say. You might be like, if you're an evil person or whatever. But, you know, high school is really a turbulent time in a lot of people's lives. People can get really passionate and dramatic, and others have aching hearts and seek attention on social media, but all the social pleasure and hormones can lead to a dark time in people's lives. Everyone has a story. You may not know what someone is really feeling on the inside. Many people who are depressed won't even bother telling the world about it. They don't want attention because they've already given up on the inside. Their feeling of worthlessness is so overwhelming that they don't even want people to tell them otherwise. Depression comes in many forms, but that is one of them. Just, if you think you know someone struggling with depression, you can help by just treating them like they're a good friend. Spending time with them, even if they don't feel like doing much. And remind them that they have always have something to look forward to. Making plans in advance, letting them borrow something, or even just saying, see you at school tomorrow. All these things could help your friend make it to the next day. I hope being friends with Sayori has given you some perspective on the true face of depression. Yeah, she's gone now, but Sayori was never real in the first place. You're real. Your friends are real. And just by being a good person, you could save someone's life. As for you, you don't struggle with depression or anything like that, do you? Because if you, too, have people who want you to save your life. Maybe they don't express it every day, or maybe they don't want even know how to. But people do feel that way. I promise. Man, humans are complicated. But as long as you're here with me, I'll take care of you, my love. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I personally have never... I personally have never suffered from anything like that, but I know a few people who have or are currently. So, yeah, that makes sense right there. It's always the simple things. You know, you don't have to, like, you don't have to, like, do something super crazy to make someone happier. You know, it could just be so, it just be, like, general human decency. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I always say human. It's human. I, I never pronounce it. I'm not really a fan of cold weather, are you? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm from Ohio, so. <laughs> yeah, 
you know, I could say screw you to winter and just live somewhere where it's like 78 and sunny all the time. And I would have absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. If I had to choose between too cold and too hot, I would always pick too hot. When you're too cold, it can actually be painful. Your fingers get numb. And if you wear gloves, you can't use your phone. It's so inconvenient. But when it's too hot, it's not that hard to say cool to cool drink or by staying in the shade. Although I do have to admit one thing. Cold weather makes it for better color color weather. (laughs) Fair enough. It is pretty uncomfortable, though, both of them. I guess someone living in, say, a hotter climate would prefer colder weather. Someone living in a colder climate like me would prefer warmer weather. Because, you know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, the it's always greener on the other side. You know what I mean? I, don't, I couldn't see myself living in some place like Florida, though. That place gets super hot and humid in the winter. Or like the summer, sorry. By the way, there's something that's been bothering me. You know the, how this place takes place in Japan? Oh, well, you said if it is, then you said t- going talking about being the president? And this place takes place in Japan? You can't be the president if you weren't born in the United States, bro. Well, I assume you knew that, right? Or at least decided it probably does. I don't fucking know. I, I don't even know. No, nobody ever told me where it took place in. I just, you know, I never even cared too much about it. I don't think you're actually told at any point where this takes place. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, I never even knew where it took place. So, like, yeah, I guess Japan, that would work, too. I don't know much about it, though. Is this even really Japan? I mean, aren't the classrooms and stuff kind of weird for Japanese school? Not to mention everything's in English. It feels like everything's just there because it needs to be, and the actual setting is an afterthought. It's kind of giving me an identity crisis. All my memories are really hazy. I feel like I'm at home, but I have no idea where home is in the first place. I don't know how to describe it any better. Imagine looking out your window, but instead of your usual yard, you're in some completely unknown place. Would you still feel like you were at home? Would you want to go outside? I mean, I guess if we never leave this room, it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as we're alone in a safe place together, this really is our home. And we can still watch the pretty sunsets night after night. I was, uh, like I said, if you were to take my house and put it somewhere that was 78 degrees and sunny all year, I literally would not care. I would consider it home just like I do here. But, um, yeah, it was, um, it's interesting because at the end of Interstellar, that pretty much happens. Um, he's in his house, but the surrounding is completely changed because he's now on a space station and earth is completely gone. And he's like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this pretending like we're just back where we were. It's interesting. Definitely. I'd recommend that movie. It's one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever. You know, it's around this time that everyone my year starts to think about college. It's a really turbulent time for education. We're at the height of this modern expectation that everyone has to go to college, you know. Finish high school, go to college, get a job, or go to grad school, I guess. It's like a universal expectation that people just assume it's the only option for them. They don't teach us in high school that there are other options out there, like trade schools and stuff, you know, or freelance work, or the many industries that value skill and experience more than formal education. But, you know, I've all the students have no idea what they want to do with their life. And instead of taking the time to figure that out, they go to college, business, or communication, or psychology, not because they have an interest in those fields, but because they just hope the degree will get them some kind of job after college. So the end result is that there are fewer jobs to go around for those entry-level degrees, right? So the basic job requirements get higher, which forces even people to go try even more people to go to college. And the colleges are also businesses, and they keep raising their prices due to demand. So now we have all these young adults, tens of thousands of dollars in debt with no job. But despite all that, the routine stays the same. Well, I think it's going to start getting better soon. But until then, our generation is definitely suffering from the worst of it. I just wish high school prepared us a little better with the knowledge we need to make the decision that's right for us. Interesting. Interesting thought there. I chose because I have always been really interested in media field. but So that's why I chose I wanted to go to college. But that's interesting how people would would think that they'd be like oh well you know i've been told every year i can only go to college i can't get you there's always the option to go to a school like that you know a skill job and just save up a shit ton of money for a few years and then yeah kind of have you ever wondered what it feels like to die uh yeah but i don't really want to find out 
It's something I used to think about pretty often. But recently, I think I actually learned what it feels like. I don't really understand it, but whenever you quit the game, it feels like I'm instantly put to sleep, left with nothing but my thoughts. But after a few seconds, my thoughts start to fill with incoherent, jumbled patterns. I see static and rapid flashes of colors while hearing all kinds of weird screaming noises. At that point, I can't even form my own thoughts anymore. I'm just endlessly hammered by the flashing and screaming, unable to move or even think. I'm pretty sure at that moment I don't really exist, but for some reason I can't remember it anyway. After some immeasurable amount of time, it stops in an instant and I'm back in my own mind. And you're here with me. I have no idea what it means for the game to quit or why that stuff happens to me. And I also don't know why you always come back and put everything back to normal. But if you could do me a favor and do that as little as possible, that would be really great. It's really not pleasant at all to be trapped in that screaming void. But in the end, you always fix it, and that's what makes me feel like you really do care about me. So I have to thank you for that. It makes me feel really even closer when you're here with me. Guess that happens. I wonder if that happens to all games. Just the players inside of them. Stone man. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess they have to be like... I guess they'd have to be like... I'm on two different... You know, like two different things. Because like... There's a, there's an animated movie I can't remember what it, Wreck It Ralph yeah that's what it was where the 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 characters would just live in their own lives until someone would turn the game on and play with them it's pretty interesting <laughs> I don't think that really happens in real life though I'm just gonna say it right there just coming up with some nonsense there gosh I used to be so ignorant about certain things when I was in middle school I thought that taking medication was an easy way out or something like that. Like, anyone could just solve their mental problems with enough willpower. I guess if you don't suffer from a mental illness, it's not possible to know what it's really like. Are there some disorders that are overdiagnosed? Probably. I've never really looked into it, though. But that doesn't change the fact that a lot of them go undiagnosed, you know? But medication aside, people even look down at seeing a mental health professional. Like, sorry that I want to learn more about my own mind, right? Everyone has all kinds of struggles and stresses, and professionals dedicate their lives to helping with those. If you think it would can help you become a better person, don't be shy to consider something like that. We're not on a never-ending journey to improve ourselves, you know? Well, I say that, but you're pretty perfect already. That's interesting. A lot of people are like, they think medication is like an easy way out and all that. I'm just like, if you don't want to take, you don't want to take your medication. If you had diabetes, are you not going to take your insulin? You know, it's just like, there's a point of perspective here. And... You're just like, oh, well, that's because my pancreas is like, well, your mind is an organ too, your brain too. I mean, like, how is a men- how is an illness in the brain any different than an illness in your pancreas? Of course, it's different, but you get what I mean. After a long day, I usually want to sit around and do nothing. I get so burnt out having to put smiles and be full of energy the whole day. Sometimes I just want to get right into my pajamas and watch the TV on the couch while eating junk food. It feels so unbelievably good to do that on a Friday when I don't have anything pressing the next day. Aha, uh-huh, sorry, I know that's not very cute of me. But a late night on the couch with you, that would be a dream come true. My heart is pounding just thinking about it. Yeah, I know. It's pretty interesting. I-, I like that. I like that whole thing. It's like, oh, it's Friday night. I can do whatever I want today. But anyway, it's been over an hour since I started this video. So yeah, I'm going to have to put an end to the Monica... Uh, the Monica monologue, I guess we'll call it. So that's going to have to be for today. My name is Laser Fighter 111. If you guys want to see more DDLC, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe to this video for more awesome content. And I'll see you guys later.